Zach, we are back, and we are looking at more moves to make as we creep through the Dynasty offseason. And we'll also be getting into some certifying moves to make, whether you should be making some moves, fixing some trades that we've seen go down in the Discord or elsewhere in the Dynasty landscape. But before we get into it, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment down below what moves you're trying to make this week. Let us know what you're trying to get done with that roster. And if you want help from us, check out the patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind Discord server where you can get a free seven days on us. See if you like the Discord server. Stick around if you do. And if you want that much more help fixing your roster, check out the roster view option in the pinned comment or YouTube description box. But with all the promo in the books, Zach, let's get to the content that people came for. What is your first move that you were looking to do as we creep ever closer, yet still very far away to the regular season? So, you know, we had a discussion the entire leading up to the draft about the running back position, right? Hey, you're not going to get a lot of solidified backfields. We've got maybe one or two, and I don't even think those two get really established until 2025 because Jonathan Brooks is going to be rehabbing from an ACL. And Trey Benson, I think, will be the one B to James Conner, at least for the first year or at least the first half of the season. Who knows how that goes? You know, what what we said on this channel was going to happen with the running back position via the draft happened. And look, that's not some bold statement. Uh, You know, that was something that a lot of channels have talked about, the running backs not being the strength of the classes. However, what a lot of channels did not talk about is making sure you have running backs ready to go because the drafts running backs will not help you at least in the short term and things that I have been doing. And again, I know that I would say a good amount of rookie drafts have already happened. So it's hard to get these done. I, I think it's harder to get moves done post rookie drafts than almost any point in the season. There's a little bit of fatigue, right? Everybody wants a break. I totally understand that. Even me, myself, you know, you want a little bit of time off, you know, you're playing the waivers after the draft. However, you know, the running back is such a fickle position in the NFL that I want to make sure that I have solidified backfields. So the long way to a short story, Bob, is that I'm acquiring backfields. I'm not acquiring running backs. I'm acquiring backfields. Unless you have Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, and there's maybe one or two other running backs that I'm missing in that equation, you most likely have a running back in some kind of a split. And, and in these cases, I find it uh, not overly expensive to have two running backs in the same backfield. This can also help you in case, you know, you have one of those running backs and you you have an injury, uh, in case you have anything that goes awry, right? You you have a backup plan uh, because let's say you have, for example, James Conner and James Conner gets injured. Well, Trey Benson's about to step into a lot of opportunity, right? How nice would it be if you had both of them? This is something I've been focusing on the last, I would say, four or five months um and i have one that i'm really liking that i'll talk about in just a second but some other backfields that i like here bob and a lot of these include you know some of the rookie picks as well i really like the rashad white bucky irving backfield i think that's kind of a um those guys do kind of the same thing um and maybe i think that's that is a clone of the ram situation right i think that they drafted somebody that does the exact same as the person that's already there and they want to take some work away from the running back that was very successful in, in that offense. But I don't think that Bucky Irving overtakes Rashad White, just like I don't think Blake Corum overtakes Kyron Williams. I think both of those running backs are solidified as the 1A, and they have a 1B. So I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers backfield. I like the Arizona Cardinals backfield, James Conner, Trey Benson. I actually really like that backfield, and I am not so sure that the Arizona Cardinals don't bring back James Conner in 2025 it's way too early to say that now but he has been very successful the two years he's been there he's been perfect for that offense even when they've had one hand tied behind their back at the quarterback position James Conner has really stepped up for that offense so uh, obviously James Conner's 2025 outlook depends on how he's going to look this season because you know at any point anybody can fall off a cliff I'm not here saying James Conner is going to be the best running back we've ever seen another one I really like it this is a three header is the Gus Edwards J.K. Dobbins, Kamani Vidal backfield. The reason I like all three is because it's not really expensive to get all three. Like you could get all three of those running backs in a startup draft, like after the eighth or ninth round. To secure a running back or a backfield and not have to put a lot into it, that's what I'm all about, right? But my new favorite backfield, Bob, one that I just never had any interest in prior to the NFL draft, and it's not because of Tyrone Tracy, but I'm a big fan of this New York Giants backfield. I think Devin Singletary is a great running back. 
First of all, Devin Singletary went to my alma mater, FAU, right? He succeeded every, everywhere he's gone in the NFL. Buffalo, he succeeded last year in Houston, even though Damian Pierce was there. And I was a Damian Pierce truther. I didn't think that I wasn't afraid of Devin Singletary. I'm like, ah, oh, Devin Singletary, no, no worries. I think this is Devin Singletary's backfield. And I truly believe that Tyron Tracy is the second running back in that pecking order. Maybe not to start the year, but to finish the year. I made a move in one of my recent drafts. Now, I want to give the caveat here. This was a one quarterback league, Bob. But I was coming up on the board. Tyrone Tracy was there at the 403. And I said, I want to draft Tyrone Tracy. However, I would also like to buy Devin Singletary at the same time. Before the draft pick, actually. Because Tyrone Tracy on his own, and this is not a deep league. This is like a 25 to 30 man roster. It's not that deep, including taxi spots. So it's not a deep league. So I wanted to have Devin Singletary with Tyrone Tracy. I didn't want Tyrone Tracy without Devin Singletary. So I approached the Devin Singletary owner and we came to an agreement and it was J.K. Dobbins and a 25 second, which was not my own for Devin Singletary and a 25 third. Got Devin Singletary, drafted Tyrone Tracy. The rest is history. I now have an entire backfield in my opinion. I'm not really worried about Eric Gray when all is said and done. Uh, I know the besmirching of yourself. Eric Gray, the you besmirching. Yourself, Zach. Hey, hey, if you have a deep league, go by Eric Gray. What's it cost you? A fourth round pick? I mean, somebody's I yearning. Know if it's that somebody, much. somebody is yearning <laughs> to get rid of Eric Gray. Okay, trust me. They're like, please take this from me. Give me five dollars, Bab. We'll call it a deal. Find the Michael Bauer in your Don't league. Do Don't find the Nate in your league because you'll never get a deal done. I'm buying backfields. I'm really happy with this acquisition. I really don't feel like I gave up all that much. I didn't give up my own second round pick. It's a it's a a, a team that's constantly in the playoffs every single year. And J.K. Dobbins to me is somebody who I do love that he's in in Los Angeles right now. But I can no longer like I need J.K. Dobbins is the fantasy player I need to quit. Right? I need to get out of that relationship. I can't quit this relationship. My friends are telling me to get out. My family is telling me to get out. And finally, I got out of the J.K. Dobbins relationship. And I'm so much the better for it. So this to me is something I, I think is an approach that I'm taking in my dynasty leagues now to make sure that I have security at the running back position, because, you know, last year was the quarterback position. that was very volatile, but it can easily be any other position, including um, a, a position that's easily discarded in the NFL, like running back. So again, part of this, uh, of these backfields, Bob, and then I'll, I'll let you speak after this part of these is that they're not expensive to acquire. Mm -hmm. This is not Bree. This is not B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier. This is not Jameer Gibbs and, and, and uh, David Montgomery. These are cheaper backfields to acquire and things and, and ones that you can get done in your rookie draft by just drafting the player and trying to buy the complimentary player, Bob. Yeah, no, I, I like this concept a good bit. Um, something Nate and I discussed last week was the concept of really focusing on this like crown jewel concept or anchor running back, hero running back, whatever you want to phrase it. Um, how to build a running back room where we have this one really, really good running back. And then the rest is, you know, money ball. How can we get the most running backs in a roster, the cheapest that are going to produce and use whatever later picks to pick up these players at value and just kind of build up all the other positions of longer lasting players, quarterback, wide out, tight end, have one really solid running back and then just kind of build the rest the way you can and you kind of touch on the monopoly concept here where instead of buying boardwalk or park place where you're spending all this money and it takes buku bucks to upgrade these to really you know nail somebody with or whatever the case is but you can spend so much less on more properties that take less to build up upgrade and you can still do just as much damage and it's more likely that they're going to land on those so just a fun little way to concept there or a fun way to tie that in and Talk a little board game action while we're at it. Why not get some Monopoly references in there? But taking that shotgun approach to the running back position and just saying, how many running backs can I buy as cheap as I can and just load up and go from there? Um, I like the concept a good bit, Zach, and I think it's one worth, like you said, what's the cheapest backfield you can acquire with the pieces you have? And if you're, hopefully you're not expecting them to be like your top end running back too, you know, maybe you're expecting them to be more of a flex piece or something along those lines. Hopefully you have something better in your uh, running back two slot, but not a bad way to build rosters, not a bad way to attack competitive rosters. But moving on to my point here, Zach, and this is just something I cannot 
I cannot get behind. I don't understand it. I kicked myself in this one for a while because we got another video coming up in the next next week or so where we're talking about players that we want to sell before it's too late kind of a thing. And I cannot help but avoid slash sell Anthony Richardson. And whether, let's say, you have a startup draft upcoming or you're considering trading, whatever, trading for Anthony Richardson, whatever the case is, I'm here to say that I just can't get behind the value of him right now, whether it's startup, whether it's trade value. And the fact that it just seems like everybody's written off his rookie year and all the question marks that came along with it, given he had so little experience coming into the NFL, was so raw as a prospect, and you know missed most of the season due to injury, lack of general experience, as I mentioned. But it just seems like all these concerns are just like, ah, he had three good games, it's fine. And when you look at those three good games, it really comes down to those games were good because of the rushing. And that's 100% part of his game. But what keeps quarterbacks really in the league is being able to be functional quarterbacks with the ball in their hands. And you look at quarterbacks percentage wise that had as many dropbacks as Anthony Richardson. So you take out a bunch of like the lower level guys, albeit he only played four games, still had more than a lot of players who just came in through three balls and called it a day. Um, Sean Clifford with his handful of attempts is actually a pretty efficient quarterback if you want to go on that route. But either which way, you look at the comparison in those four games, 42nd worst adjust completion percentage out of 50 quarterbacks that fit the criteria and the 40th worst pressure to sack ratio. And that's one of the huge like indicators of quarterbacks that just are, you know, struggling at the next level, struggling with reads, whatever the case is, and just handling pressure, which admittedly was not an issue for him at college in college. So I was kind of surprised to see that be a thing, but, and also put together a paltry 3.5 touchdown percentage, which is uh passing touchdown percentage, which is how often he throws a touchdown compared to his attempts. It's a small sample size. I get it, but the concerns live on, you know, we need to put into consideration you know, while he was fun and exciting for a few weeks, a lot of it's due to rushing, which isn't necessarily going to go away. I'm not I'm not suggesting that. I'm not even saying he's going to be bad. I'm just saying that, hey, these are things that need to be considered. And with all of this, in startups in 2023, as a rookie, his ADP was pick 15 and quarterback 11. Now, after missing most of his rookie season, his ADP has gone up to pick eight and quarterback seven. How does this make sense? This is just one of the things where I just have to look at and be like, why is he going ahead of quarterbacks like Justin Herbert, albeit in a, you know, lesser situation expected to be with Greg Roman calling the shots and Jim Harbaugh calling the shots of that roster. Kyler Murray going behind Anthony Richardson, Caleb Williams going behind Anthony Richardson, while albeit a rookie, I still have less question marks transitioning to the next level. And Jordan Love, another player going behind Anthony Richardson, who I have less question marks about at this point. At the end of the day, this comes down to the value. Don't hate players, hate values. And I don't see the need to add the risk to your roster like this, even if, even though I can admit that there is just so much upside with Anthony Richardson. There, that's undeniable. You know, he has quarterback three, four, top five upside. I'll 1 million percent admit that. But the floor is not good for Anthony Richardson. I think we can admit that if he if he struggles to stay healthy again this year, does just is not able to pick up playing on an NFL offense outside of his rushing. The rushing isn't going to keep him in the league. It's he's going to need to be a proficient passer one way or another. I have a rose colored lens on what I think he can be overall positive with what I think he can be. But it's just a matter of why do we need to put him up boards? when he's done so little to give us any security or thought in that process. I'm just saying, you know, with one of the either very high valued assets that you're moving to acquire him or one of the first picks that you're going to make in a new dynasty league, that is one of the most, most valuable assets you were ever possess in a new dynasty league. Why are you spending it on such a risky player? That is Anthony Richardson. And again, can't stress enough. I don't think he's going to be bad or bust out. I'm just suggesting to approach the situation as wisely as you can. If I have Anthony Richardson and he's projected to be my quarterback one or two, I'd love to tear down to any of the options I listed before, those being Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, Caleb Williams, or Jordan Love, and get an additional asset on top. Assets I'm seeing 
uh, through completed trades um, on fantasy calcs forward slash trade database. Second or third round picks, multiple thirds in those cases where they are third round picks in 24 or 25. Marquise Brown is one. Even some first round picks, which I assume are late or projected to be late. I'm not, I don't think you're getting an early first or anything like that um, in a super flex league. And if I'm in a startup, I'd rather take Jamar Chase or CeeDee Lamb off the board. And then on my wraparound pick in the second round, at the top of the second round, I'd rather go just grab one of the quarterbacks that are sliding down there. Let somebody else take the risk on Anthony Richardson. If it pays off, great. I don't think you're losing out on that much with taking one of these safer options. And that's what does it for me. Like, if he comes out, has a great year, sure, we'll have a discussion. But at this point... I just, I can't wrap my head around taking these risks that are unnecessary. I get sometimes it's worth taking the risk because if you hit the upside, everything's all fine and good. But if you miss, you know, and I, I hate throwing this parallel out, out there because they're not the same player, but Trey Lance was a top 12 to 15 pick when he was the, declared the starter for San Fran. And that went to heck in a handbasket very quickly. And... Anthony Richardson, in my opinion, is on a similar tightrope to walk. Again, I have a positive outlook, but why take the risk? Worth noting, Joe Flacco is the backup quarterback currently for Anthony Richardson. So if he misses time, I don't think Joe Flacco is going to be Brock Purdy or anything like that. But we've sh we've seen that uh, Joe Flacco can do some damage um, in a backup role. But if he's your quarterback three, fine. I'm not as concerned about the 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 move here or having him. And if you have him already, I'm not necessarily saying like you have to move him, but if he is slotted in as your quarterback one or two, I have concerns um, at the end of the day. Zach, feel free to chime in here. Any thoughts on Anthony Richardson? I'd love to hear it. What do you got? For, I, I, I wouldn't have so much of a problem if his ADP was where it was last year. Like you said, sure. like, you know, I wouldn't hate it beginning to mid of the second round. I, I could get it. Um, the reason why I think that, his ADP has actually gone up is because we did get two Anthony Richardson games where he was a top five quarterback on mm -hmm. the week. Now he only had four games I, and really we can only say three because he got injured in that, in that fourth game, but he was quarterback four week one quarterback 19, despite only throwing 10 passes, he was still a top 20 quarterback that week. Because yeah. he had two rushing touchdowns. All the rushing, yeah. Right. And then um, didn't play in week three. And then in week four was quarterback two on the week, despite having a 44% completion percentage. So yeah. um, I can get why people are drafting him. It's not anything I would do, and it's not anything yeah. you would do. I would much rather have – I'm looking at a startup that I did recently where Anthony Richardson went 109. I would much rather have Joe Burrow, who went 111. I'd much rather have Justin Herbert, who went 112. I would much rather have Jordan Love, who went 201, and much rather have Kyler Murray, who went 203. Uh, you got a lot more security and safety in those situations due to contracts or the fact mm -hmm. that Jordan Love is going to get a contract just based off of how he played last year. You know, there's that security, and, and it's much more long term security because right now, Anthony Richardson is on a rookie contract, and, you know, they could decide after three, four years, hey, we want to move on. A lot of those other guys are locked into those positions. But that's why I think it's happening. And I'm not saying it's right, but I am trying to get into the minds of people who are drafting him at 109 and say, whoa, what, what you know, the hopium and it like it is a real thing. I've, I've I feel like there's more hopium going around in the community than there is before. I agree with this point. It's way too much of a risk for me to be drafting Anthony Richardson in anything other than I would say after the first 15 picks of a startup yeah. draft because of the players I just named I'd even rather have like I could keep going down the second round I'd rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. I'd rather have Brees Hall when I get to like the AJ Brown Puka Nakua that's when I'm like eh, maybe I'd take Anthony Richardson there because that's just where I feel comfortable with the risk that is associated with Anthony Richardson, just as much as he could be good as he was in two or three weeks last, uh, last year, he could miss another 12, 13 games this year. So, mm -hmm. um, and by the way, Joe Flacco is exciting in that system, man. Shane Steichen's yeah, offense I, is, is phenomenal. Dude. Yeah, if, I, if, I, if I, if I'm an Anthony Richardson dynasty owner, I'm trying to buy Joe Flacco. As like should. I'm, I'm dead, dead serious on that, by the way, I, that's not a joke. Most of my quarterbacks and you can attribute to this, Bob, when I have Brock mm -hmm. Purdy, I've gone out and bought Josh Dobbs this offseason. I, I, I'm a big, like, 
let me get that cuff because the investment is is so much that let me make sure I'm protected here. So agree with this point. Can't do it. 109, too much. No, thank you. You take your hopium and go somewhere else, please. I just can't stress enough. Like I have, you know, gone on this channel on record and saying, I think Anthony Richardson can do it. But there is all of these red flags concerns that I just can't, I can't deny at the end of the day. And that's just my thoughts, my opinions, and my hopes that y'all just, just let him slide down the board a little bit. And if somebody else drafts him, you're still getting darn good talent up there too. But Zach, you got another move here, another concept here to target or think about that goes in tow with something Nate and I will be discussing in tomorrow's video. So stick around, make sure you're subscribed, hitting the bell so you don't miss that um, once it's live. Zach, what do you got here? In, not everything that we can do in May and June is is about players. But one things that we can do is start to prepare our teams. We can prepare our teams by acquiring draft capital. We can prepare our teams by you know, trading for fab for the last few months. We can prepare our teams by looking ahead, Bob. And that's what I'm doing now. It is a way far look ahead. Things can change, but we generally have a blueprint of what the future NFL draft class looks like about one year ahead. I know you guys are going to talk about it, but there's a couple of very interesting wide receivers, and then there's a boatload of running backs um, and some of them could go back for another year, by the way, because, you know, there is NIL money and all that kind of good stuff. So um, even though there's going to be eight or nine names on this list that's coming up tomorrow, probably don't want to assume, but I am I have looked ahead at the future draft class. There are not a lot of quarterbacks and there's mm-hmm. like two, maybe two tight ends that are of like significant interest. I, I think there will be more tight ends that you think um, okay. we don't. We don't touch on a ton tomorrow, uh, more as honorable mentions, spoiler alerts, but th- I think there will be more in this class. I think this class will be a lot more higher regarded than 2024 was at the tight end position. At but least. really, when we're looking ahead, we're looking at the first 10 to 15 guys. We're not looking 30 deep. Sure. We, we it, It's right. hard. You'd have to be in like a Debbie league to really know that deep. And, and that's that's what I'm talking about here, because I'm talking about taking a look at the future draft class coming out in 2025 and seeing what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses and how is that going to align with my team? It's not something that you have to prepare yourself for now, right? But let's say your season starts to go awry after three, four weeks. We all have leagues where things just don't go our way. Well, we, at this point, look, there could be like a Jaden Daniels next year that comes out of nowhere, right? But right now, We are looking at somewhat of a 2022 draft class. There could be is a Quinn is a not Quinn Ewers. Um, it's Carson Beck next year could potentially come out. Um, Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers is a name too. Shadur Sanders. Yeah. So there's a couple of names, but you know there could be a situation where it's not a very good quarterback draft class. Plus, we just had six go in the first round. So you know you need to start preparing yourself for that, and that's where you need to stay locked in. Stay dialed in. We will be doing 2025 content. Trust me. I'm now part of the content board at the Dynasty Rewind. We will be doing a little 2025 content, making sure we're plugged in. We do it on our Discord, which, of course, you can get free access to uh, for a week down below in the pinned comments. Um, And just staying apprised of, you know, who's looking good in in, in next year's class. So that's that's really what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking a bird's eye view at my team. I'm taking the snapshot and seeing where are my strengths, where are my weaknesses, how does this align with the uh, NFL draft next year? You know, if I'm buying Devin Singletary and Tyrone Tracy, I'm just trying to get through a year. Mm-hmm. Can I go next year and 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 can I just make it like that's how my points connect here? Hey, look, I, next year's running back class seems to be the strong point of the class, right? Um, let me get a running back to get me by. Devin Singletary, Tyron Tracy, I think that can get me by for one season. I have no idea what that looks like in 2025. They could draft somebody else day three. They could cut Devin Singletary after you. You have no idea how that's going to look. But I'm uh, I'm aligning my visions with my dynasty teams. If I'm buying cheaper running backs, it's because I'm probably looking at one next year to give me a little bit more safety and security. So, again, take a step back from your team. We have team audits here as well, which we, we we take a look at your team, see what needs work, see what doesn't. And listen, man, we have helped people win championships 
I love doing team audits. I love, you know, connecting with people and saying, Hey, what was your mindset here? We got a lot of information on those too. Why'd you do this? What'd you do this? What'd you do in the draft? So on and so forth. And then say, I would do this. I would do that. Take a look at your team, see where it's strong, see where it's weak. And how does that align with the, with the future draft class? Um, and again, you don't have to do something about it right now, but start preparing yourself. Hey, if I'm 0 and 4, it's time to start, you know, I, I can get rid of Saquon Barkley off this team. Uh, you know, he, who knows what he looks like when he's 28 years old. Let me get off him. Let me pick up a first round pick next year and pick up one of these other running backs because that is a strength of the class next year. Yeah, couldn't agree more with this point, Zach. And you touch on the point of running backs being a strength of next year's class and kind of glazed over the fact that quarterbacks are going to be a mighty sus concern next year. We don't know if there's going to be a ton of quarterbacks coming out that are worth adding to your roster or at least prioritizing to add to your roster. Maybe trade block considerations come up where somebody puts up a quarterback for trade. Maybe it's that much more worth looking into, especially if it's an established quarterback. If it's, you know, one of these backups like a Jacoby Brissett or something like that where he's, you know, maybe going to start a few games this year, but maybe not anything down the stretch, you know, maybe not as much worth your time. But if you're staring at two options in the draft, you know, between a quarterback and a wide receiver early in your drafts in that top seven, top eight range where there's still good quarterbacks kicking around, it might be worth taking that shot on a quarterback instead of maybe even going with a Roma Dunze. As much as we love Roma Dunze around here, if you know you you have a quarterback need going forward, similar tiered players, similar tiered values, and a super flex draft at least, something to consider and definitely something to keep an eye on as you know things approach and as this class develops, things could change very quickly. Quarterbacks are very finicky with how they are valued by the league. J.J. McCarthy, for example, was not a first-round pick heading into last college season. He ends up as one. Neither was Bo Nix. They both end up as one. Thoughts to be had for sure. But moving along to our final segment here, broken up into five segments. We got five trades to look over. Crazy stuff, Zach. I went ballistic with this one. I just wanted all the trades, all the smoke I could get. So we have a few trades pulled right from our Discord, and we have a, few, a couple trades pulled from Fantasy Calc Trades Database. I want to get some running back deals in here. Haven't been a ton of running back deals going on. Um, so Discord, get some running back deals done. Just kidding. I'm, I don't care. Looking at this first one, we acquired Zach, one of our favorite tight ends, for – seemingly nothing i feel like we got away with robbery in this one there's no tight end premium that i know of super flex league we got tj hawkinson for john U. smith and a 25 first how is this not just the smash deal of the century what are you thinking on this one is this is this even closer is this just easily we take tj hawkinson to run here you know i'm gonna be honest with you i can see both sides of this oh, um man first of all there's no tight end premium right and we right, don't sure. know we don't know a lot about the Hawkinson injury just yet um sure. i'm not saying this is a fair deal i'm not saying that i am saying i would i need to wait to see because if you're not getting production from tj Hawkinson this year and you are getting production from john smith I'm, I'm telling you as a dolphins fan they desperately desperately in that offense need a tight end that they can utilize as a pass catching weapon. I'm not saying John Smith is a top 10 tight end, but he showed last year as the backup tight end that he could be relevant in a, in a run heavy offense too, by the way, it, obviously the better value is the TJ Hawkinson side, right? All I'm saying is sure. there's a lot of unknown for me that this would make me like unsure. If I had the security blanket at tight end, if I had a David Njoku on my, on my bench, I'd do this deal. Because I have sure. points coming in that I feel comfortable that I can wait for TJ Hawkinson to come back. So I'm not saying yeah. it's a great deal to smash. I'm just saying I I need to know that I have points on my bench at tight end to wait for TJ Hawkinson to come back. Yeah, I, I think my biggest thing here and to people out there that might be selling TJ Hawkinson for a deal like this, as we've discussed previously, talking through our roster reviews, one of the concepts of, you know, if you're trying to fill an injury hole it's rarely properly filled by selling the player that's injured because you're not going to get great value. I don't think the TJ Hawkins and manager manager got great value selling here. If you want to, you know, fill a hole of production, I don't think it's best found by going after John Smith or even just his 25 first. If you're not even looking for production, you just want a tight end to kind of say whatever with and just get a 25 first. I don't love that process either, but if you have TJ Hawkinson and you are trying to find a, a filler go grab evan ingram 
you know, somebody we've talked about a little bit on this channel, somebody who's yes, just grossly yes. criminally undervalued and somebody who I don't think costs you too much, maybe a mid second, maybe, maybe a late second plus a third, something along those lines. I don't think it's a crazy cost, especially in a non tenant premium league to go get Evan Ingram. I think that's the move to make over trying to move TJ Hawkinson for anybody. Cause you, I just don't think you're getting good value for him right now. But with that said, we will move along into the second one here. It's actually a two-parter. We have one team making two trades, but that is all the fun of this one. So we acquired in our first deal, we acquired Dalton Kincaid plus the 24-206 for 109 and the 203 at the cost of the 109 and the 203. So essentially, 109 gets us Dalton Kincaid. Then we trade down from the 203 to the 206. Zach, what are your thoughts on this one here? I would be very happy to acquire Dalton Kincaid for this price. I'm not saying that this is not fair. I'm saying that in a year from now, I think you could look back on this trade and be like, man, the guy that got Dalton Kincaid really won that trade. And the 203 to the 206 is there's no difference there. That's the same tier yeah. unless somebody reaches on a Michael Penix or so, there's somebody reaches for a player. You're staying within the same tier. Yeah. You're just not getting the choice of who you want. So mm -hmm. I got no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah, 100%. Love this cause to go get Dalton Kincaid, who I think is locked and loaded for a top five finish at tight end. And that might be a little modest, I think. And when I say top five, I don't think I'm saying number five, maybe even not number four. So maybe a top three finish would be a better way to say that. But heading for a breakout season on a collision course for it. Um, so with that said, the same team here, um, not playing favorites, just another trade I saw that I liked a good value. And then I actually saw that they were the same team. So we took that 206 and we sent a 2025 second along with it. So we sent the 206, the 25 second to go get Jaden Reed. So with that, with that said, we acquired Jaden Reed for the 24, 206 plus a 25 second. So we traded out of the second this year, traded our 25 second next year. Zach, what do you think about this one? This is the Insta smash deal. Okay. This one. Not not TJ Hawkinson for a first and John Smith. Jaden Reed for a mid second and a 25 second. I mean, he's worth a first round pick alone. And to Just get that to, to get this, this is somebody being afraid of the of the Green Bay Packers. This is somebody like, oh, they've got too many mouths to feed. They've got Jaden Reed and Christian Watson and Luke Musgrave. So what, man? Like Jaden Reed had a phenomenal rookie season. And again, this this is similar to the Amon Ross St. Brown situation a couple years ago, where that offense really started to kickstart when Jaden Reed became not mm -hmm. a focal point, but a part of that offense, a cog in that offense. Same thing with the Lions two years ago. You look back, they started like 0-10 two years ago, and then they won, I think, three of the last seven, six or seven games. And you look at why, what was their reason for success, and part of that was Amon Ross St. Brown. And so to me, I, I kind of do the same thing. We really saw the Green Bay Packers turn a page last year and what, what was the difference in the offense from the first eight games to the next nine games? Well, Jane Reed became a thing. Sure, there were some games where Watson was there and, and Reed didn't produce as much. Sure, that's the thing. It's not scaring me off from Jane Reed, especially at this price. To me, this is like discount city. This is like going to Walmart, looking at the $5 DVD bin, and finding a 10, a 10 movie trilogy in there. Like th That's just a phenomenal value. So I'll take Jane Reed all day for two, two second round picks. A ten movie trilogy. I just you heard it here first. Man. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah, I, I gotta say I like this value as well. I think he, you know, Jaden Reed, somebody who's on the fringe of a first <laughs> and a second round pick, and apparently a ten movie trilogy. I meant um, to say anthology. My bad. Yeah, well, hey, I'll <laughs> I'll I'll take the ten movie trilogy too. Can we put that on a t shirt, um, please. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see about it. We'll get that. We'll get in touch with our marketing department and we'll talk about it. But I like this value a good bit too. I do think, I don't know, maybe I'm being a biased Packer fan. I think the discussion for who the wide receiver one is for Green Bay comes down to I think Jaden Reed is in that discussion no matter what. I think it comes down to Christian Watson if he can have healthy hamstrings and I actually done taping Wicks at this point. I think Wicks is somebody who is kind of being mighty slept on at this point and somebody that I really, you know, want to go acquire. I just drafted him in our C2C startup pretty late. I think 13th or 14th round, whatever the case is, either way, I drafted him late. You know, he's probably the cheapest to acquire out of that grouping. So I'll take my shot on that. But Jaden Reed is certainly, like you said, a cog in this machine one way or another. He is a spark plug for that offense. 
um, at the end of the day. So looking at a fantasy cap trade, because I wanted to find a running back trade. Um, talked about a couple last week that were in the Discord, went outside of that, because I wanted to talk some running backs, Zach. Um, in this first one, Ramondre Stevenson was acquired at the cost of a 25 second and a 25 third. I have no idea where those picks are landing. All I know is that this is a super flex league. Reminder Stevenson was acquired at this cost. What are your thoughts on it? Moving two 25 picks for a player now, soon to be a free agent, still probably the one in this running back room ahead of Antonio Gibson. Interest in Ron- Reminder Stevenson. I kind of want to get your pulse on Reminder Stevenson here. I have no idea what you thought. So think it's of just it. not somebody I'm overly interested in. This is probably a fair deal. Uh, but there's just a lot that makes me not want to acquire R- Ramondre Stevenson. You said it right there. He's probably a free agent next year. Is anybody next year chasing Ramondre Stevenson and giving him a bag? I mean, so the most notable so far free agents are set to be Ramondre Stevenson, Najee Harris, Javante Williams. But again, look at back. the running we have back the good class. good running back class. Yeah. So that, whenever we've had a good running back class, the free agent, uh, the, the free agent class is – Dog poop. It's bad. Suffers okay? a little. Yeah. No, it suffers a lot. Like we never saw anything like we saw this offseason. And what what dots can we connect? Well, there wasn't very many good running backs in this draft. So the ones that were free agents got paid. Um, I I don't see anybody going out there and giving Ramondre Stevenson a DeAndre Swift contract. I just don't. Then I see Ramondre Stevenson losing a little bit of work to Antonio Gibson, especially in the past uh, in the past catching game. And then I see an offensive philosophical shift in the New England Patriots a little bit, where Bill Belichick's not there anymore. They're not trying to beat teams thirteen to ten. Maybe they are. I don't know, but they certainly did address offense at quarterback and wide receiver. Hunter Henry's still there. They they did bring back Kendrick Bourne to Mario Douglas. They drafted Jalen Polk and Javon Baker, and of course Drake May. So you know, I think that. That is an offense that wants to get those pieces involved, especially as rookies. While Ramondre Stevenson has a role, this is not a backfield I'm looking to acquire. I'm I'm not sure what – obviously, it's Ramondre Stevenson one and anybody else two. But on pass-catching situations, Antonio Gibson is far better than Ramondre Stevenson. Um, So to me, that removes him off the field. And then the fact that I just don't think he gets the volume of work that was available in this offense as it was last year. Uh, to me, I, I, I don't want to acquire. This is a, probably a fair deal. This is good value both ways. I just don't want it. You'd rather have the 25 second and third side. You'd rather sell rather, Ramondre I'd at this cost? I'd rather go buy someone else at a different – I'd rather go buy Devin Singletary cheaper than that I, because I think he'll have a better season. Either way, I, I think I'm in agreement with you. I think I'd rather find somewhere else to move that 25 second and third. Maybe go invest in somebody like uh, Kendrick Miller, Chase Brown, someone along those lines. I think I'd be willing to go invest in Najee Harris. I'm not super worried about his contract situation. I know he got his uh, fifth year option declined. Allegedly that he asked for being declined. I'm pretty uh, okay with buying Najee. I'd rather do that than buy Ramondre. Personally, we move along and digress. In this next one, Kenneth Walker was acquired at the cost of Zay Flowers. So would you rather have Zach, Zay Flowers, or Kenneth Walker, or team dependent, fair deal across the board? What do you think? No, I think I'd rather have Zay Flowers here, actually. Um, really? Kenneth Walker is somebody that I really felt like I did a good job of unloading last season and getting quite a bit of value. I don't, I don't know if you remember that deal where I sold Kenneth Walker and I got Nico Collins in a first. So, you know, he still carries that kind of weight. I would just rather, uh, you know, with the shelf life of wide receivers, I like Zay Flowers. I think that he had a a pretty successful rookie season in a place that we don't really see wide receivers be successful. Um, and, And I think that he can continue that or be better. I do think that Kenneth Walker, I think he's had back to back like RB 18 seasons or something right around there. I do think he can be better than that. But the fact of the matter is like Zach Charbonnet is there. And Zach Charbonnet is not just a backup running back. He's not a starter. He's not the one B, but he's going to take work away from Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is also a guy, you know, and look, not a lot of running backs can do this, but doesn't stay healthy. Like he's kind of got that Kyron Williams thing where he misses three, four games every year or James, the same thing as James Conner. So I think I'd rather have Zay Flowers here plays in the better offense plays with a secured solid quarterback and is developed rapport with Lamar Jackson. Probably a fair deal both ways. I just prefer 
you know, the dynasty assets you want are wide receivers more so than running backs, unless it's an upper echelon running back. And Kenneth Walker is just not that to me. I am curious. I, I gen- generally agree. Um, I, I think I might prefer the Kenneth Walker side, but it's not by a wide margin or anything like that or anything where I couldn't be swayed, you know, by team situation. If I really need a running back too, but I'm loaded at wide outs, I would probably be willing to move Zay Flowers. Maybe give me a pick flip of some kind in there, a third for a second or something along those lines, whatever the case is. But I am very curious to see what Kenneth Walker can look like in this new offense. I know he didn't really shine with Dave Canales while the rest of that offense did two years ago, particularly Geno Smith kind of resurrecting his career and getting a long-term deal out of it, a lot of money out of it. I'm still curious to see what happens with Kenneth Walker, even though it, it could just be that a pumpkin is always a pumpkin kind of a thing. Uh, you know, it could just be that he's a very good running back too with some upside, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I'm curious to see, but like you said, I think he's still pretty highly valued. And I think you can't, I think you could probably aim for better than Zay flowers. I think is probably what I'd also want maybe, but that's just my two cents, but either which way, that is it for certifying moves to make. That is it for the moves to make. All the moves are in the books. But before we get on out of here, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below what moves you are looking to make. And if you want help making moves on your roster, there's two ways to do it. Check out the YouTube description box. Check out the pinned comment below for how to get a roster review or how to hop in that Patreon Discord. Patreon.com forward slash nice rewind. Get in there for a free seven days. Ask all the questions you need to about bettering your roster and what kind of moves to make it help for myself. Zach, everyone on the crew, and everybody else in our 220 plus strong community. I chat that thing up every single day. But with all that said, we're going to get the heck on out of here. We'll see you in the next one. But until then, I hope that y'all have a good one.